Hello, Owen. Hello, Sophie. How are you? I'm not too bad. I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm relaxed after a night of uh, giving some ninja support to uh, the local community and supporting the NHS. That's very nice of you in these times. So I wanted to introduce you to my son Valentin. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Ah, oh, shark T-shirt. Yay! Very good. So would you be happy if we record this session because Valentin is having um, under the sea. So semester and he's got some questions for you. Uh, absolutely happy to uh, have the be recorded and ask the questions. No problem. So yes, I'm Roan Byrne. I'm the, the technical principal for Marine Ecology at Mott McDonald and just a crazy Irishman who absolutely loves the sea and sharks. Perfect. So Valentin, would you like to ask your question? You know what's the first one? How deep is the ocean? Say that again. How deep is the ocean? How deep is the ocean? Wow. Well, let me see. <clears throat> um, the deepest point in the ocean is called the Marianas Trench, and it's off the coast of North America. And that is, from memory, purely from memory, is 33,000 feet, which would mean if you got the biggest mountain on land and you put it in the sea, it would still disappear. So if you took Mount Everest, the one of the biggest mountains on the planet, and you put it in the sea, in this trench, in the deepest part of the ocean, you wouldn't see it, it would disappear. Shall we go on to the second question, Valentin? How big are, how big are the whales? How big are the whales? How big are the whales? Wow, well, there's a lot of whales on the planet, and like us, they breathe air. So, do you know how big your mummy and daddy's car is? Do you know how big the car is? You, your mum and daddy have a car. It's quite a big car. So you have, the reason why I tell you that is, I know you're shaking your head, but the reason why I tell you that is that that's the size of the biggest whales on the planet, the blue whales, his heart. So you, his, 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 his heart is as big as, a, as a, a small car, a Volkswagen, most, most cars. And me and you and your mum and whoever wanted to uh, could swim down the arteries that supply the blood to his heart. So the biggest whale, a blue whale, would probably be, I'm pretty sure, somewhere between 30 to 50, probably about 50 metres in length, which is, uh, which is a lot longer. Um, I'm I, need to, I need to just try and find you some scale, which would be probably, probably five or six buses in a row. Five or six buses in a row to make the biggest well. Mm -hmm. That's how big. Are you ready for, this, for the third one? Let's go. Let's go with the next question. Fish is the biggest fish. What is the smallest fish and the biggest fish? Oh, smallest and biggest fish. Well, you could say as the smallest fish is a is a newborn fish, a fish that's just basically been born and, and can be microscopic that the naked eye can't see it. But a fully grown fish, um, the smallest fully grown fish, I think the easiest way I can suggest it is, is probably the pygmy shark. And you can't see my hand, but you can. But he's probably fully grown as an adult, like your mummy and myself and your daddy, is from there to there. So a couple of inches. He'll fit. He'll probably fit on the, your hand. That's how small a fully grown pygmy shark is. Really, really, really small. And then the biggest one, uh, the biggest fish would probably be the whale shark. Uh, and the whale shark can, uh, is, and the best part about whale sharks is they're plankton feeders. They don't eat fish. They don't eat other sharks. They don't eat any any marine mammals, and they have teeny weeny weeny little uh, microscopic plankton that you could only see under a microscope. Uh, that your mummy does every day in work, and you can read and you can see these. And he he sieves those through like a big sieve. So smallest fish, or probably the smallest shark, um, would be the pygmy shark who fits on your hand, fully grown, and the biggest one would be the whale shark, and he's. Well, he's probably he's probably three buses long. He's very, very big, very, very big. And his mouth, let me see. His mouth would be, uh, it's hard to show. His mouth would be, let me see. If your mummy and your daddy lay down, uh, 
together like that, uh, parallel, his, their mouth would probably be two or three times wider than that. It's just really, really wide. So you could swim into his mouth. He's so, he's so wide, so wide, so wide. I, I, I can't, I'm, I'm losing my, my rationale to scale things now, but um, he's very, very wide mouth. <laughs> Couple of meters in length. What's the disgusting fish in the ocean? Oh, um, that's a very good question because um, it, there's a lot of fish who probably do disgusting things. Um, give you a clue. Shall we give you a clue, Valentin? Yes. It is one that covers himself in slime. <gasps> would it be a slime fish? Would it be a? It would be an ooze slime. It's. Um, I'm trying to remember what it is Hag. now. It, Hag. Hagfish, is it? Yes. Yes, and and there is also one other fish which is really cool, and it's called the Moses sole fish. And in when a shark when a shark bites this fish, it releases this ooze from it, and the ooze makes the shark go. <coughs> I don't like this. This is not nice. And he spits the fish out, and he's called the Moses sole fish. And what we found was, many years ago, scientists were wondering, why would a shark cough this fish up? He wants to have his breakfast. Um, and they found out that the compound, the chemical, in the fish's slime was the same as what you find in shampoo. Oh, so, so what you wash your hair with, a shark doesn't like. So next time you want to say, Mr. Shark, please leave me, give him a bit of shampoo, and he'll leave you alone. Nice. So you have to be clean all the time when you go in the sea. Yeah, toothpaste and, and, and shampoo are your friends because it, it, it'll, it'll, put, it'll put manners on the sharks. Actually, I've just realized, look, you've got your T-shirt for sharks and look at mine. Yes. So there you go. So us, us shark ninjas, uh, we all stay together. But there you go. So hagfish with slime and then also the Moses soulfish as well. How does plastic get to the sea? Wow, that's a great question. Um, plastic gets to the sea because sometimes humans forget to to um, to store it and put it away properly. Um, and what happens is plastic. If you drop plastic outside your house on the ground, rain and wind uh, and water will wash it into the shores, which then drain into the water treatment works and into the sewers, and then the sewers carry all of that to the sea. And that's why you find plastic sometimes on the beach, uh, because it hits the sea and then it's pushed back. So what you'll find is that there's rivers, there's sewers, there's um, there's tributaries. It's a, well, small little rivers, and they carry all the plastic to the sea. So if we didn't put plastic on the land, it wouldn't go into the sea, and it wouldn't use the rivers, and it wouldn't use the sewers. So that we have to put the rubbish in the rubbish bin properly. Yes, absolutely. Always put the rubbish in the bin properly. Never put it on the ground. Um, if you can, try not to use plastic. You know, use something else. You might be able to use uh, uh, paper. paper, yeah, or bamboo. Or, or your, your mum is very, very, she knows very much about this. You just you look for alternatives. This is where it gets exciting. Just you can say, what can I use today that isn't plastic? Ah. I think I'll use wood. I think I'll use paper. I think I'll use something else that isn't plastic. And once we stop using a lot of plastic, we don't have to completely stop using it. That means we reduce plastic going in the bin. And that also helps the environment. That's very nice. Now, we're going to ask you the last question we have. At least, wait and down. <laughs> Why is plastic in the ocean, which is a problem? Say that again. Why is plastic pollution a problem? No, why is plastic a problem? In the ocean. In the ocean. <gasps> well, that's a super duper question because plastic is a big problem in the sea. Um, because fish eat the plastic, sharks eat the plastic. It Plastic ends on coral reefs. Uh, uh, plastic ends, uh, um, you have whales eating the plastic. And what happens is, unfortunately, and sea turtles as well eat the plastic because they think it's a plastic bag when they think they see a jellyfish. So basically what happens is it's bad for the ocean because it kills the ocean and it kills the animals that live in it. 
and um, it also kills seabirds as well. So it's very bad for the, the ocean because the ocean can't destroy plastic. It, it can't absorb it. It does absorb it, sorry, but it can't destroy it. It's not natural to be in the ocean, and that's why it, it becomes toxic and it's a pollutant. So what you find is animals sometimes eat it by accident, and unfortunately they die and it, it, it kills them. So it, 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 it harms the environment because it's not supposed to be there. Um, and when it's there, it basically, unfortunately, kills off the coral reefs, kills off the fish, kills off the sharks, kills off the seahorses and the sea turtles, because, um, because unfortunately, you know, it's, um, it's toxic to them. There you go, look at that. This is a forecast, and that's, that's a great background because it is predicted by the United Nations that there'll be more plastic in the sea by 2050, which is 30 years from now, than fish. And when you're an older man and you have your own boy, boy and girl and you're visiting granny mum and, gran and granny and granddad, you'll be saying, when I was young, there was more fish. And you have the power, you have the you have the you have the resources. You should be saying to everybody, we need to protect the ocean and we need to keep plastic out of us. I had well, I had a plan to report the police about okay. plastic. And very good, very good. Yes, that's every. If you report it and you keep people, you keep reminding people that it's bad to have plastic in the sea because it kills fish and it kills the sea. And even walking on the beach, you'll find it there. And the animals that live on the beach, they have problems with the plastic. If you tell everybody it's not good to have plastic in the sea, we need to stop plastic getting to the sea. You're doing a great job. Rowan, I know yeah. something you should report to the police about plastic. Yeah, you can report it to the police. Uh, I know you... something that you could report it to the police for. Yeah, you could. Can you tell everyone in the ongoing world that they, so they can stop you using too much plastic and chucking on the floor? Everybody, you're absolutely right. the police, the firemen, the NHS staff, the staff of Mott McDonald, myself, everybody. And me. And you, yeah, everybody has a part. And we of them in my group, the ninjas as well. Yes, yes, and you can tell all your friends when you're allowed, when, and the lockdown is over and all this has passed, You and even online you can tell your friends now, but we must keep plastic out of the sea. And do you know what? When you when this is all finished and, and we can go out back out to the beaches and the countryside, that's when we could probably get more ideas and do more great work keeping plastic out of the sea. Perfect. Good man. Well, thank you very much, and we will let you have your weekend. I agree, Grant. There's no problem. Well, look, thank you for this. And any more questions, keep them coming. No problem. And well done for all your great work and super questions. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.